It's an honor to be here tonight and to be with this great man of God and his precious wife, Kate, and all this amazing team. It gave me a, it gave me a few minutes, so I'm going to share a true story, and I want you to listen intently, and then I'm going to get out of the way, and we're going to see what we're all here for, the Lamb of God exalted in this place. But some years ago, there was an article in the Los Angeles Times, I think it was, one of the newspapers in the city of Los Angeles. And this is what they said. <clears throat> they said that the smog and pollution over the city had become so severe that it was desperate and they had hired a commission of experts to find out what to do what would be the solution for the pollution over Los Angeles? The fog was so bad and the environment was so polluted. And the article said that there came the big day after months and months of studying and, and analysts doing what they do. They had a big press conference and all the press of Los Angeles was there. The mayor was there. Different officials was there. And this one man gets up and he begins and he says, well, I need to, I need to, and I should shroud what I'm about to tell you, but I've always tried to be an honest person. And he, spe he said, especially when I think about the fact that you've, sent, you've spent an enormous amount of money to do this study. But he said, after doing all that we could do and all the greatest minds coming together, the bottom line is, this is a quote, there is no solution for the pollution over our city because of the millions of people and there's just so much that's constantly accumulating in the atmosphere there is no way that we can remove the pollution and then he paused now only only a preacher would notice this he paused and he actually i don't think he meant what he was saying like i believe he needed to say it but he said these words. He paused and he said, what we really need is a wind from elsewhere to sweep down and sweep through the city and take all of the pollution so far out to sea that we can start all over again clean and pure. I wanna to preach to you for just a few minutes Give me five minutes, but I want to preach to you on a wind from elsewhere. Because when the Old Testament closed, the land and the nation of Israel was so polluted with sin that God went silent for 600 years. He wouldn't speak to Israel. He wouldn't send revival. Not one prophet, not one word from the Lord. It was nothing but a dry and barren land. The ministry was polluted. The sacrifice was polluted. The priesthood was polluted. The church, the temple was polluted. The nation, the politicians were polluted. And it seemed as if there was no solution for the pollution until there came a day when a tall, lean Galilean showed up on the Jordan River bank and John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And that Savior named Jesus died and rose three days later. But before he left this earth, he called his chosen disciples in. And he did something in John 20 very strange. The Bible said that he breathed on them. And suddenly he said to them, go to Jerusalem and tarry in the upper room and wait there to be endued with power from on high. Those men went to that upper room in Jerusalem, 120 men and women. And while they were assembled there, the Bible said in Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, suddenly there came a sound from heaven, catch it, as a mighty rushing wind. 
It appeared unto them tongues of fire. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to pray in the Holy Spirit as he gave them the utterance. What was going on? Suddenly weak men, suddenly men who were who were ashamed and who denied Jesus, suddenly they were filled with boldness. They spilled out of that room into the streets and they began to preach the gospel. And I believe that what happened when a mighty rushing wind filled that upper room, that was the wind from elsewhere that cleaned everything out. When I look at America tonight, when I look at our cities like Los Angeles and Chicago and Atlanta and all the major cities of America, we have a pollution problem of sin and nobody can fix it. No, no, not even the Congress can fix it. Not even the White House can fix it. No politician can fix it. There's only one solution to the pollution problem of drugs and alcoholism and sexual abuse and immorality and pain and depression and suffering and hopelessness and fear and desperation. There's only one solution for COVID-19 after it's all said and done. We need the Holy Spirit wind from elsewhere to sweep through our cities to sweep through our homes, to sweep through and clean out the pollution of sin and the pollution of fear and worry and torment and depression and hopelessness and despair. Do you believe what I'm saying? I want you to understand that in Ezekiel chapter 37, There was a valley of dry bones. And the Bible said three things about those bones that that speaks to me of the church today. The Bible said that the bones were dead. The bones were dry. And the bones were divided. I love the church. I'm a pastor. I'm a church guy. But the truth is, we're divided, we're dry, and we're dead. We need a wind from elsewhere. And the prophet was asked a question by God. God said to the prophet, can these bones live? And then he became a politician. He gave a very political answer. Thou knowest, Lord. He just stayed in the middle. Only you know, Lord. And then God said something interesting to him. He said, man of God, prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the wind. And tell the wind and the breath to fill this valley. And I love what the scripture said. The Bible said a wind came from elsewhere. Oh, God. Let it happen over our nation tonight. Let it happen over our families tonight. Let it happen over our lives tonight. Let it happen over this mall tonight. Let a wind from elsewhere, the Holy Spirit, flow and blow through this place and cleanse our hearts and our minds and our spirits. And the Bible said when the wind began to blow through that valley, The division, the division. I'm so tired of us arguing with one another. We get mad if you wear a mask, if you don't wear a mask, if you take a shot, if you don't take a shot. I don't give a rip. I'm gathering under a name that is called Jesus. We're so divided. Baptist bones, Methodist bones, Presbyterian bones, Pentecostal bones. Why don't we leave all, why don't we let the wind blow those names away and gather under one name tonight, the name of Jesus. It needs to unify us. Bone came to bone when the wind began to blow. We need to learn from hell. You never hear of 50 demons leaving Satan and splitting off and starting a new hell. 
One thing about hell, it stays together. And when the wind began to blow, the Bible said the divided bones jumped together. And flesh came on the soldiers. And the Bible said, and the bones came together, and they, the dry bones came alive, and they stood up on their feet. I don't know what has happened to you this last year. I don't know what hell's done to you. I don't know what's going on in your life. You may have someone in your life that it feels like they're dead, they're dry, and they're so divided, and maybe the enemy's torn your family to pieces, and it just feels like it's a valley of dry bones. But I'm prophesying tonight, just like Ezekiel did, there is coming a wind from elsewhere that restores the years the locusts and the canker worm have taken away. We've watched him devour us for two years but it's time for a wind from elsewhere a wind of revival to come to the nation and to the world if can you take a praise break and give the Lord a mighty praise somebody Woo. come on I'm almost done but you know what got me is the Bible said that they stood up on their feet. They stood up when the wind came. It's time for us to get a backbone. It's time for us to stand up again. Let's stand up and say, yes, the Bible's right. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, neither is there any other name but the name of Jesus that will get you into the gates of heaven. There's no other name but the name. And we need to stand for that name. We need to stand up for our nation. We need to stand up for our cities. We need to stand up for our churches. And so what I'm praying for is a wind from elsewhere. You know what? I'll close with this. When I read that, you know what I wanted? I started talking to it. And I said, I wish I'd have been in that press conference. You know what I'd have done? I'd have stood up and I'd have said, Mr. Mayor, if you go down to 312 Azusa Street in Los Angeles, where a revival broke out in 1901 after a pandemic, and a wind from elsewhere swept down and there was such a revival that hit that place that it swept the drugs out, it swept the gangs out, it swept the violence out, it swept the racial division out, it swept racism out, it swept hate out. And if God did it once, he's going to do it again. If you believe it, raise your hands and open your mouth and say, God, send the wind from elsewhere one more time and sweep everything out and clean us up and make us like you. Will you give the Lord a mighty shout? Hallelujah.